What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for coming back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about Friday the 13th, the final chapter. And as you can tell from the thumbnail and the title, I have Q reviews and Rashad G reviews here in this video with me. We're going to hear from them in a little bit on their thoughts on this, but yeah, they're big horror movie slasher fans. We talk about horror movie slashers all the time. We have a slasher series that's going to be coming out very soon with the three of us. We're going to be doing that very soon. We'll be talking about horror movies and slashers together in many videos. But yeah, we wanted to start it off by doing this right here, the fourth film in the franchise and it's so funny for a franchise with so many films I love the fact that a film that's somewhere near the middle of the franchise is called the final chapter with the next film being called a new beginning and it just kind of leans into the silliness of this franchise for me but in my opinion this is really where the series actually starts to get good the most notable thing about this film without a doubt is Corey Feldman's character in this film Tommy Jarvis who is essentially like the Laurie Strode of this series being that he is the only reoccurring character in this franchise even though they recap him in each and every film. You do see Corey Feldman for a brief scene in the next film, but yeah, once you see him older, he's a new actor every single time. So yeah, the character of Tommy Jarvis is introduced in this, and he's the one reoccurring character in this franchise, and Corey Feldman plays him in this, and you know, I loved Corey Feldman in this age of his acting. He's just a very likable and enjoyable actor, so I do enjoy him in this film. I enjoy how they portray Tommy Jarvis in this film. It gets a little weird near the end, especially when he shaves his head, but yeah, I didn't kind of like the character. He's kind of this kid that's obsessed with horror masks, and he literally makes all these really badass special effects masks in his room, which I always thought was really cool. But yeah, this movie on overall for me is where the cinematography starts to get a little bit better. And there's actually a likable character in the character played by Crispin Glover, who would go on to be Marty McFly's father in uh, Back to the Future. And he's been in so many other movies now. He's like one of the few actors that you see in this series that would actually go on to become a bigger name in acting. So yeah, I've always liked Crispin Glover's character in this movie. And going back and rewatching it, I had a good time with his character. He's the one likable character that when he dies you think oh damn that guy didn't deserve it whereas majority of the other characters are just your horror movie slasher fodder essentially of course you have your big group of teenagers that are sleazy and kind of just dumb and just kind of there to make jokes and be horny and you know that's what they're there for and they're just the fodder for Jason in this film and yeah on an overall level I think that this movie has some really awesome kills the special effects are really where it starts to get a lot more solid for me there's a really great moment at the end where you get to see Jason's face really really well and he gets fucked up and he fucks some people up in this movie <laughs> And on an overall level, I just love the way this film looks. The special effects and the kills are really solid. And again, this is where it starts to get entertaining for me. You have a likable character in Crispin Glover. And of course, the introduction of Tommy Jarvis, who is easily the most popular character in this series. Now, before I continue giving my thoughts on this, let's go ahead and hear what Q Reviews have to say about this. Just Yo, what up, Anthony? Thank you so much for having me on to talk about my favorite slasher of all time. That's right, your boy. Here's this mask right here. This is not for social distancing. This is to talk about Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. Let's just get into it. Started off with a $1 million budget, end up making $32 million. Wow. Is this a retread of the first three films? Yeah, pretty much. It takes place on Sunday, so it's uh, three days after Friday the 13th. So kids go to Crystal Lake, uh, Jason's killed, and they bring him to the morgue, and he wakes up in pure Jason Voorhees fashion. Let me just get, I'm I'm eight years old. I'm going back to when I was eight years old. We had a, my grandmother had a VCR. We got that Friday the 13th from a mom and pop's video store. And and this is, I, I had seen part three a couple times. I haven't even seen Halloween, the first Halloween episode, but I knew, I knew something about this guy Jason that I really liked. I wasn't in love with Jason until this film right here, which I think is the excellent film itself. It is the quintessential slasher movie. It's my favorite, personal favorite slasher movie of all time because it's true to the fact that it's a slasher movie. But it's also a coming of age romantic comedy with some actual Friday the 13th characters that I really care about. Kristen Glover and his friend Teddy in the back talk about how he's a dead fuck. But it's one, <laughs> it's one fact that's not funny and it's not romantic. That is the killer Jason Voorhees, right? And 
That's all it is. It's a, it's, a, it's a bloodbath for about 90 minutes. This Friday 13th, I think, has the best kills or some of the best kills. I could pick out three Friday the 13th deaths in this movie alone that are some of the best in the franchise. Kristen Glover asking for the corkscrew. Have you seen Ted? Have you seen the corkscrew? Gets a corkscrew in his hand, he turns his head, and then he gets a uh, machete to the face. Just <laughs> fucking brilliant. And um, the, the dude, you ever had your shit pushed in? It's a guy in the shower. He just finished making love to his boo, his boo-boo. And then... Um, Jason's, of course, with a playback to the psycho shit, if you, if you didn't peep that. And then he just opens up the shower and pushes his shit in, <laughs> pushes his whole face into the shower. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? In the back of the shower, it's towels, it's bloody. It just seems so uncomfortable to die naked like that. You ever got shot in the dick with a, a spear gun? The creativeness of these kills still stands up to this day, to this day. Tom Savini worked on the first Friday the 13th. Well, say what you want, it's dated at the time. I think this is some of his best work here in part four of the creative nip of the kills. Uh, at the beginning when Jason's in the hospital, he slits some guy's throat with a hacksaw, then turns it all the way the fuck around. Then he has the nurse and split her from her neck all the way down, if you know what I'm saying. And they show it. And this was cut. It was cut from the MCC, you know what I'm saying? Because it was too fucking violent. And if you watch this film right now, it's, it's still violent. Let's give it up to your boy Jason, played by Ted White. Wow. He is my second favorite Jason. My first favorite Jason is Steel King Howder. But this Jason, I'm going to be very clear with this. He was not funny. <laughs> it was nothing funny about this Jason at all. Actually, he was kind of terrified. They shot him most of the time in the dark. You kind of see the silhouette of the mask and he had come out and during that third act, the final showdown, when he's chasing the girl there. You know what I'm saying? It's just a, like a full force of tank just coming at you. You know what I'm saying? Jason don't even know why he's killing. He just has to keep killing. You know what I'm saying? And we go to these movies because we root for Jason. You know, at least, at least me as a horror fan. I'm not looking for the deep end collectural plot of this movie, which this one had a pretty good one for a horror movie. It's a lot of tension, especially in a hospital scene when before Jason wakes up and his hand falls down. All the, you know, set up kills that they do, I think are the best in the series. I think the, the score is magnificent, you know? Friday the 13th Part 4 has one of the best, no, it has the best death scene I have ever seen from a horror movie icon, alright? If you've seen Part 4, Tommy comes down, he figured out, you know, um, Jason's whole deal, so he shaves his head, you know, catches Jason off guard, and then through the side, he gets a machete, you know what I'm saying, in the side of his head, and then he falls on the shit slowly, through his brain, through his medulla oblongata, all that shit, on the floor, son. I'm eight. And I watched that shit over and over and over again. So if I had to straight up get Friday 13th, the final chapter of score, you can even skip the first three if you're not into slashers like that. If you want to know some of the back history, fine. But this is my favorite Friday the 13th movie. You can start with here, because this is actually a scary movie. Now, in part six, which is my second favorite Friday the 13th movie, they start to make jokes with Jason. Like, Jason pulls off someone's arm, and they don't quite know what it is. I mean, that's not really scary. That's kind of, you know, lighten the low, you know what I'm saying, to ease you into this. But part four, he was actually fucking terrifying. If you look at him, you know what I'm saying? He, he was terrifying. He was a force to be working with. How are you going to fight Jason? How is a kid going to fight Jason? He had to use his intellect to stop him, man. It's just, it's, it's my favorite slasher movie of all time. So if I have the Ray Fryer 13th uh, part four, the final chapter, I think I'm give it a five out of five, man. It just does what it's supposed to do. I know it's not for everyone, you know. I know this, you know, the, this this horror genre, the the silly and this acting and, and what it was, but for what they created and the budget they had to do it, man, it gets my highly respect because Friday Thirteenth Part Four still stands up as the score. Uh, the Carnage Cannon Special Effects by Tom Savini, the great Ted White who played the second best Jason. I think he actually might be the scariest Jason out, out of them all, man. It's just the Quinn and Schistel slasher to me. So thank you, Anthony Perez, for having me on there. Can't wait to hear your thoughts on this. And don't just stare at it. Eat it.
Peace. Big thanks to Q Reviews as usual. You can find his link in the description box down below. Loved hearing what you had to say about this man. I know that Jason is Q Reviews guy. Like he is his favorite slasher. So I wanted to hear what he had to say. And yeah, I love hearing what you have to say on this man. So yeah, my overall negatives on this film would probably just be what all these other films have. You have a bunch of characters you don't care about, a story that really isn't developed. You have really cheap jump scares at times. And on an overall level, you don't really find yourself emotionally invested in any of the characters. And of course, you kind of have to expect that from these movies there's nothing about a lot of these films that really is going to grip you emotionally it's really about just seeing all these people get killed by jason through this film and on that level i think it really succeeds the kills in this film are really solid i like the one that's at the very beginning of the film i believe it's the first person that jason kills in this movie where he kills this guy who was essentially looking over his body this film picks up at the very end of the third film and so they take jason's body who's you know dead they they take his body to uh to the morgue and the guy who's kind of like you know dealing with the bodies doing autopsies and doing all that jazz is this really weird just kind of sleazy guy he's watching these girls do this weird booty dance on screen he's making inappropriate comments about the dead girl that's on the on the table there and yeah he's just kind of this really weird inappropriate nurse and he gets really nasty from uh jason he gets his head essentially twisted all around blood everywhere i love that kill and he has this really weird line of dialogue that he has right before when jason's hand comes out and scares him I just don't even understand who wrote this. Jesus Christmas! Holy Jesus God damn! Holy Jesus jumping Christmas shit! But yeah, on an overall level, this film is just filled with bad acting, characters you don't care about, but really good kills. And I think that this, for me, is the epitome of an 80s slasher film. I think this is one of the better films in the series, simply because I think this is where they started to lean into the, what really makes Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th. And it was just a little bit more entertaining for me, going back and watching the other ones. The second and third film are a lot more what you would expect this franchise to be, but they're not necessarily as entertaining, and a lot of the characters are just hard to get through. There isn't even as much of that charm to them as there is for this film and the films that would follow after because I find that each film in this franchise gets a little bit more cheesy a little bit more campy and I feel like with each film they're leaning in more and more to really what makes this franchise fun and stupid and silly while also keeping Jason cool and keeping his kills really badass and I think this film definitely executes on that now before I give you guys my final thoughts let's go ahead and hear what Rashad G reviews have to say about this <laughs> Deal pickles is everything kosher. A Perez, thanks for having me on this video. Also, with my man Q reviews, can't wait to hear what both of y'all have to say about this cinematic masterpiece, this visual beauty, the epicness, the scope, the direction, the score, the sound, just the brilliant acting and and subplots and just all all the the. This is almost the perfect film. Who the fuck are we kidding? We're talking about Friday the 13th, y'all. Fucking Jason. We're talking about Jason, Friday the 13th, part four, also known as the final chapter. This was supposed to be the last of the Friday the 13th movies. And in a way it was because this was the last time that Jason was actually scary. I'll be honest with you. When I saw this as a kid, this frightened the hell out of me. When Jason was getting ready to kill somebody, I had my eyes covered. I'm, a lot, I'm eight years old watching this, so... I'm scared to death, okay? When he took my man in the shower and crunched his head up against the wall, when he took uh, Crispin Glover, uh, Marty McFly, not Marty McFly, but George McFly, put the corkscrew in his hand, put the fucking cleaver to his face, Jason was brutal in this. Now, he's brutal in every movie, but it seems like after the fourth one, the kills were still really good, but they became a little cartoonish. They became fun, where you're looking forward to people getting killed. This was the last of the human version of Jason before he became a zombie, before we saw him without the mask, with the maggots and shit. This was still human form Jason, but slowly deteriorating into what he became. From Friday the 13th one to this one, it followed the same formula of the killer killing all the, the kids, and then at the end... They place all the kids in certain places, so the, la the last person that survives at the end has to go through this maze of dead bodies to get away from Jason or, or Mrs. Voorhees. And then at the end, they had this confrontation, one-on-one. -on -one. It, it does become kind of repetitive, but still, who cares? It's Jason, it's Friday the 13th, who gives a fuck? You watch these movies for the kills. You watch these movies to see the flesh. That didn't sound right. You watch this <laughs> <laughs> you watch this movie to see the kills. You watch this movie to see, uh, well, from a guy's point of view, you go to see um, women's anatomy. 
and there's chock full of that, man. There's a whole bunch of it. You go to these movies for that. You go to these movies for fun. And that's the one gripe that I have with Friday the 13th Part 4 is that sometimes the movie takes itself a little too seriously and tries to be a serious movie. And there's even a couple of subplots in here that you just don't care about. Like the the one guy who's a camper who's, uh, I guess he's trying to track Jason down because Jason killed his sister. That subplot didn't go anywhere. Jason did away with him real early with a fucking with, with a garden hoe and then at the end they try to set the movie up where tommy jarvis i think i think that was his name the the cory feldman character where tommy jarvis becomes the new jason okay he shaves his head and everything he reminds jason of how he was as a kid and then he has that moment where he's he's steady hitting him with the machete but you can see the machete is bouncing off something so of course he's hitting like a bag of potatoes or something while he's coming down you know die Die. That that's my only gripe is the movie kind of dragged a little bit where I'm like, okay, this movie needs to know what it is. It's a slasher movie. We just want to see a bunch of bodies. We want to see a bunch of boobies. I'm just gonna have to come out and say it. We want to see a bunch of boobies. We want to see that. Okay, we want to have fun with this movie. And sometimes it just it 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 dragged. But other than that, I love this movie. So yeah, wrapping it up, y'all. Um, from because I, I know I give grades to to my movies, but. Uh, from a cheese fest standpoint, from a fun cheese fest standpoint, I'm gonna give this movie an A. But from a critical standpoint, if, I, if I'm criticizing this as a film, this is easily like like a D or a D minus. Okay, so if you talk about this as a film, uh, yeah, it's bad. But I don't come to watch. I don't come to watch these movies for for that. You know, I want to I want to see a fun popcorn slasher movie, and on that. It delivers tenfold, all right? So, y'all, uh, that's what I got for Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. Hey, Perez, OQ Reviews, whichever one of y'all comes after me, man. The fuck y'all got? I'm out. A big thanks again to Rashad G Reviews and Q Reviews for being in this video. Love having these guys in videos here with me. I loved hearing you guys' thoughts on this movie. Definitely leave all of your comments down below, guys. Yeah, de definitely let us know uh, who you agreed with more and who made a good point that you definitely agree with. Definitely want to hear all those things down below. But yeah, on an overall level, guys, again, this is where the series starts to get good for me. This is where it starts to get a lot better, a lot more entertaining. I enjoy the character that Crispin Glover plays in this movie. He's like one of the only likable characters in this series. You know, you kind of feel for the guy and you feel bad when he gets killed, but it's a pretty solid kill i enjoy the kills in here there's some really badass gore and special effects i really enjoy the way this film looks this is where again the film starts to feel a little bit more like a film and yeah you got your mix of bad acting characters that are just doing stupid things really bad dialogue of course you're just gonna have that with these films so that this film definitely has that if you're ever looking to watch this franchise i could definitely tell you guys that i think at least for me personally this is where the franchise starts to become a little bit more fun to watch because i feel like again they start to lean into what makes this franchise this franchise franchise and again I just love the fact that this film is called the final chapter even though it's like pretty much in the middle of the entire franchise the next movie is called a new beginning and a lot of that has to do with the fact that the third film was actually supposed to be the end of the franchise then it was such a success that they decided to do one more and call it the final chapter but then that was such a success and then they decided to bring it back and call it a new beginning even though a new beginning some people don't even count as a Jason movie and we'll talk about that in that video but yeah guys my overall thoughts on this film I do recommend it I think again this is where the fun starts to happen really great kills really just cheesiness in there some bad stuff it's not a fantastic film it's nothing you're gonna get emotionally gripped into but it is a fun watch if you're looking for a horror slasher to watch where you just watch a bunch of people get killed in really creative ways and i enjoy it for that alone definitely hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this video it helps the channel out and follow those links down below in the description box to go and give some love to key reviews and to rashaji reviews two amazing reviewers that are here on youtube super awesome guys they love what they do they love movies and i love hearing what they have to say about it so yeah guys that's gonna be our thoughts and i'll see each and every single one of you guys in the next video Bye-bye.